Okay, and then there's bending. So, like, um, if I'm in the key of E, root five, minor pentatonic, um, and then when I expand it, these two notes here, I can bend up a whole step. But the next note for this is up three frets. I for sure can't do that on an acoustic. You know, I, it's not even so much hand strength. The string only bends so far. Um, well, I take that back. I'm sure if I was stronger, I could bend it until it broke. But for me, it only bends so far. So... A typical bend is like a half step bend, just kind of a whine, but most bends are a whole step bend as far as a full on bend, but everything in between is the emotive quality. Uh, and then there's just wrong where you go to play. A, a whole step bend and you don't quite get there and it's just kind of out of tune it's pitchy that sounds really bad to the ear and that will make you know that'll people may or may not even realize that you know in passing they just heard something that wasn't pleasant so you've really kind of got to gauge those bends now if I'm in a root six minor pentatonic I'll drop down to the key of A and I will expand that. Notice when I expand that, that's two frets up, two frets up, two frets up. So I can bend all three strings. I'm sorry. So uh, I picked an acoustic guitar to show you these. Uh, it's much easier to bend on an electric guitar. You know, uh, I do a lot of... There's also taking a bend and playing the note once it's bent and releasing it. That's really cool. You don't have to. You don't have to bend up and back down. And notice how I use my middle finger. Because a bend takes an awful lot of power. So a real light little pick doesn't give me a lot of help or support. Like... And I get so much dynamic and so much more energy poured into the string um, by using uh, my middle finger. And so I'm constantly, you know, like... Notice how I'm... I hold it here. And I put it there. Then I can play, take it. It's like a drummer learning to twirl his sticks. All right. A lot of times I'll grab a chord, especially like this E7 sharp nine and give that some vibrato, but I'll do that with power chords as well.
so you really have to take control of every note to the degree that it needs to be handled. Um, you know, I, I'm definitely not a ballerina, but in watching ballet, I mean, you know, spinning in a circle, it's like, well, anybody can spin in a circle, not in a way that's artistic or artful or beautiful. I can't spin in a beautiful circle. Um, and if I spin too many times, I fall down. You know, it's a practice skill. And if you think of someone serving a tennis ball, I've played enough tennis, I never got to where I could just close my eyes, throw the ball up in the air and, you know, drive it across the net with consistency. But people that do that, it's it's beautiful form. It's like, wow, you know, a couple of times I almost did it and I remember how that felt in my body. Um, and, you know, if you've played sports, golf or baseball or, you know, there's just that you don't get into the zone until you have that muscle memory, then you find yourself in the zone, you know, and to the degree that we're prepared for things, that happens more often. You know, when I'm, when I'm performing on stage or even just sitting here playing, sometimes I'm just a lot more, I, I don't know, just magic just seems to happen sometimes more than others. But it's that preparation that allows that to happen, and we have to have control of our, of our motor skills for things to just flow um, with fluidity. Uh, work with these things um, and begin to pull some of these techniques into your awareness as you play. The only other thing that I tend to teach quite a bit is the flat tire. Now, I stress the importance of learning to pick or strum the guitar. See how I'm angling my wrist? I'm exaggerating it because when you learn to do something, you do exaggerate the movement. Because a stiff wrist here is not musical. You've got to be able to nuance that. So to have control of your wrist to where your your wrist is very supple, just nice and loose. But uh, you know, and and I'll like I'll really hold that pick, but I I'm very relaxed until I need to you know, grab hold of that pick and hit something. So that kind of supple wrist really helps with this. Now I use this in my solos. Those strings have to be muted. So you'll want to figure out how to play each note. So go through your pentatonic and get your left hand together as far as muting. as you move up the neck now I there, at a certain point there's going to be nuance that rings through that when you're practicing you want to try to make that not happen but once you start playing you can't worry about all that you know you practice and then the more you play I'm a very reckless player but I cover myself really well and that's a style that I have uh, but I'm covering myself, all right? 
So that's another thing you can work with. But if you'll practice It's going to feel like, wow, this is mechanical. That's never going to come to life. Just practice it. Don't worry about it. And at some point, it'll just kind of happen. Um, some things you just have to get your motor skills together. And then they they just kind of like a plane going down the runway. Eventually, it gets enough speed to where it can take off. And that's, you know, a lot of the stuff is just cumulative like that. Okay. All right. Have fun.